Welcome to Terra Talks, where we talk about all things real estate. In each episode, we'll tackle current trends and topics of interest, both locally and regionally. However, or wherever you decide to tune in, you're not going to want to miss this. Welcome to this episode of Terra Talks. My name is Brian Puckern. I am a senior valuer. And today we have Kaya Blades, interior designer. How are you, Kaya? I'm good. How are you? I'm not too bad. Good. So, interior design. Tell us a little bit about it. Um, it's a lot more than I think what people think it is. Um, okay. It's a mixture of design, decor, uh, you know, analyzing things, analyzing spaces, uh, managing people's expectations, a lot of installation, a lot of hard le- hard work, heavy lifting, uh, but it all comes down to like the final, I guess, room or the final house that is complete, okay. everything that kind of goes into it. And it's multifaceted and we work a lot with the entire team. So contractors, architects, it's not really just us and them. Everybody's kind of intertwined, which is nice. Um, so I think the process all together is what brings it to life versus my role, their role, and what we do separately. It's more of what we do kind of do all together. Okay. Yeah. So if I'm a client and I want to engage you, when would I start that? As early as possible. Aha. <laughs> a lot of the time interior design or decor is left to kind of like the end of the project or when it's coming down to the you know construction finishing but actually that's the part where you kind of want us engaged so that if there is anything that we can pick up on that the architect might not or the contractor might not pick up on you know lights are not centered or things like that on site that kind of get lost we can help with that stage of things prior to furniture and decor and all the pretty stuff going into the space so i always say as early as possible uh or as early as budget will allow and then (laughs) we work through all those stages alongside the architects the contractors you guys as clients that type of thing so that this entire process is really smooth and nothing is really missed because a lot of what architects are doing or the contractors are doing does kind of relate back to the design so you're doing a door and the door size changes or the window size changes chances are your drapes are then going to change so that's interiors Mm. so all of that is really intertwined with what they're kind of doing on site during a renovation or a new build and it's really key to get us in there before that so that we can work alongside those teams and switch as we need to go Okay, so the recommendation basically is when your architects finish the design. Correct, yeah. And a lot of the times, too, what we do with our clients is we take the architectural drawings and we kind of assess what is on them. So if there's a better way to do an internal closet or millwork and that type of thing, they can then go back to the architect and get them to edit things up before things are physically built. Okay. So a lot of the time, too... Where, where we do work together, but we're also quite separate, is some people's eyes might not pick up on certain things. And as a designer, you think about functionality first as well as aesthetic. So how you would use the space, whereas an architect is focused on how the space is built. Okay. So when you build the closet, let's say, or the kitchen, let's say, you might not actually think about the end user and close your eyes and v- envision how you're walking through that space. But we do that with you as the client. So how are you going to use the space? What are you using it for? What is in this drawer? What is in this closet? Are you short? Are you tall? Do your cupboards need to you know, be low enough to reach your height? Are you going to have a ladder that they can go all the way to the ceiling? Mm-hmm. All of these little tiny things relate back to the architecture drawings, which in turn can be changed at that point versus later on down when you've already spent thousands of dollars on your closet and then it's not functional <laughs> for you. So yeah, as early as, as, early as possible. As early as possible. Okay. As early as possible. So I'm engaged you on my new build. Mm-hmm. What outputs can I expect from you? And what would you need from me? Hmm. Um, well, it depends what you want from us. So okay. if you want a full turnkey, I suppose, yeah, a full turnkey experience, that's where you want to move in and start using your space. Mm-hmm. We can go right down to your linens, the forks in your kitchen, and we can get everything for you, put it in place, install it so that you walk in and you start living. So it really depends on how far you want to take the scope but essentially if you've just onboarded us there's a huge process so we sit with you uh the client onboarding process is quite large it's a lot of questions it's a lot of what your likes are what your wants are what your needs are Mm -hmm. and how we can kind of interpret that and put it into each design of each space and then we can go ahead and talk about all the furniture your color palettes what you don't like um and kind of put together 
what we call our schematic design. We work on the schematic design down till it's approved and then in the design development phase, that's when we roll it all out. So we fully procure everything, we organize all the shipping, the handling, arrival, clearance, bringing to site, unboxing, assembly, installation. So it really is a full service package that you can get depending on how full service you want it. Wow. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Even down to your forks, as you said. Pardon? Even down to your forks. Even down to your forks. <laughs> Knives who, and forks. Who would have thought? <laughs> okay. Yeah. What is the most challenging aspect of being an interior designer? Um, I think managing expectations. It's really difficult when you're not in the field to understand what goes into each process in terms of time, in terms of the team size, how many people you need. You know, you need all the truck drivers to deliver. You need the guys to lift everything. You need, you know, you have to unbox everything, pack the boxes, discard of the boxes, assembly. All of that is missed in the process where it says, oh, let's just drop everything to site and tomorrow you can kind of move in. It doesn't really work like that, unfortunately. And you have to make sure that you manage people's expectations along the way and how much time it takes. Okay. So a residential unit installation usually takes between a week to two weeks full. And a lot of people don't realize that. So they get con their construction handover, they get their keys. They're like, okay, cool. So we can move in in a few days. And it's like, well, no, it's a bit of a process. <laughs> um, this is what we have to do. And we have to manage all these things and everybody's time and all of the cu even custom items and whatnot coming in. And I think that's the hardest part because either they're stressed or they're excited and you have to manage that alongside the actual expectations of what needs to go in in order to get the output that you really want. Okay. Yeah. So a lot of people, people management. A lot of people management, a lot. Got you. And that's on a client side as well as like our suppliers and where we actually get physical product from. And, you know, if things are out of stock, if things are discontinued and you have to re-choose something, all of that type of stuff is a huge amount of the not so pretty side of the job. <laughs> but it's necessary because you got to get it done. Yeah. That's good. Mm -hmm. What would you say is the best part of what you do? The best part is the installation really yeah the Why? best part is like all of what you've been working on for months or sometimes even years gets put together and you actually put the table with the chair in the space <laughs> that's the best part definitely but it's also the most i guess strenuous as well because you you're there out. all day every day setting everything up uh, a lot of the time our closest team members go on site with our installation team members and we do it all together. So, I mean, it's a team of maybe five to 10 people in total and everyone's just moving around like craziness. So um, you're very hands-on is what you're saying? Very, it's a blessing and a curse. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yeah. So in designing a room, for instance, mm -hmm. do you provide pictures, sketches, mm -hmm. design layouts? Yeah, so we start with the floor plan, make sure that the layout is what we want it to be, where you want things. Uh, we bring it up in 3D and we produce uh, 2D and 3D representations of the room if needed. Um, and that again goes right down to your bed linens. Uh, everything in that mood board or that PDF or that 3D rendering is going to be the actual pieces that you're getting. So that's what we work with in the schematic design phase. And we go through and make sure that every single piece in that package you love. Once okay. you love it and it's approved, we have everything priced up. And once it's priced and you approve that, we order everything or we custom make everything to suit. Um, so yeah, you get to see exactly what is going into your space from the jump. Okay. So know that from an architect side, mm -hmm. When people design a house, seeing is believing. So you see it on a plan, mm -hmm. but it see it in real life is different. Does that um, happen for you as well? It doesn't. As, yes, in the sense of if something changes along the way. Mm -hmm. um, but every single change, every single time we have to do something, tweak something, we contact the client. So they are aware of the change throughout the entire process. Okay. So if something changes color because the fabric is discontinued, you know about it, you approve it, and then we make the change. Okay. So it's not really a case of you see one thing, you wait eight months, and then something completely different arrives, unless it was a complete mistake in the order. Um, you'll you'll get exactly what you see, and you're, you'll order and pay for exactly what you see in that design development phase. Okay. Yeah. So do you work on residential only or residential commercial residential and commercial yeah and, and hospitality we worked in hospitality before um 
yeah, we kind of work in, in all. This year we were focusing on residential, but a few commercial, big commercial projects kind of trickled in that we couldn't say no to, um, including y'all's new home. <laughs> <laughs> so it's been, it's been nice. It's been fun. Uh, it's also a whole set of different challenges right. because you're working with a much larger team. Uh, approvals have to go through many people and you're also working with an entirely different dynamic, you know, even different fabrics down to performance fabrics where you have a hundred people sitting on that you know one sofa a day versus in a home it's maybe not used as much mm -hmm. so it's a whole different level of design and it's challenged us in different ways it's also really fun to kind of see what Barbadians can do because I think a lot of people think that we're limited and we have so many artisans and so many people here that are amazing like they do such good work and you just have to find the right people. Mm -hmm. And once you find them, hold on to them. <laughs> and they produce such good stuff. Stonemasons, um, everyone, carpenters, all kinds of different artisans. We have such amazing people here. And a lot of people just go straight to ordering from overseas because it's easier mm -hmm. versus going through a process with the guy that's working in his garage. Yeah. But really, that's the quality stuff that you're going to want and you're going to need. So... It's, it's a nice balance between the corporate world and the res residential world. And you kind of have to find who you're working with for each thing. Yep. But yeah, it's been a lot of fun doing okay. the commercial stuff this year. Okay. That's good to hear. Yeah, it's been good. Design trends. What design trends are you seeing mm -hmm. in the residential side? Design trends change so much. I think too, it changes with location. So because we are in the tropics, some of the trends don't really relate to us at all okay. um, in terms of, you know, especially overseas, you see trends that happen with the different seasons. We don't really have that here. We don't change how our homes look, particularly for fall and then again for winter and then again for summer. Uh, because we're in the tropics, we don't really change that much. You may do, you know, a little pillow hair or curtain change hair, but you don't have a full home kind of transition. So trends here differ a little bit in the sense of it's not really going to hit all the trends that international markets are hitting. Okay. And I think that's fine. Um, I think that's fine. We don't have the resources here to kind of do that in a scale that uh, most people can even afford. Mm -hmm. Because if you're buying things for your home locally, as many people know, it is a luxury to be able to do that. You know, yeah. interior design or being an interior designer or hiring an interior designer is a, it's a luxury service uh, to an extent. Um, so... I don't really try to keep to trends as much uh, unless the clients see something that they absolutely love and they want. We try to stick to things that are timeless and will work through the years, timeless colors, neutral palettes, and bring in your color and your texture and your trends through little things that can be replaced, one, economically, and two, often if you want. Okay. Yeah. Design trends on the commercial side. Mm. This comes up because we know how the office is changing. Mm-hmm. Design trends on the commercial side, it's becoming a lot more focused on the employee and how they use the space and how they want to work. Okay. So originally commercial spaces or let's say office spaces, you work in your little cubicles, you don't have these collaborative moments or these spaces where you can kind of step away and have a conversation with two people, four people around a table. And that's changing a lot, which I think is a good thing. It improves your workflow. It improves being able to communicate with people. Um, so what you're seeing now is there's breakout spaces all throughout the um, office studio, um, I guess office buildings. There's little private spaces. There's little studios. There's all kinds of things for people to kind of step away and take a meeting, step away and take a call. And it just makes it way more collaborative, which I think is the way forward nowadays versus okay. sitting in your own cubicle, staring at your computer from nine to five and you get up and you roll. It's so much nicer to have a community as well as, you know, a working relationship. And that's kind of the trend that's coming on when it comes to office spaces, commercial spaces, having those moments where they can break away and you can break out and, you know, not feel like you're being punished for it, you know? <laughs> so yeah, yeah, that's one of the trends I think are definitely here to stay for the commercial sense or the office building sense. And yeah, it's a really good one, I think, for sure. Do you help people select building colors, exterior colors yeah. as well? Yeah. They're getting a bit bolder, so I'm just wondering if you're behind some of that. Yeah. Um, 
we can, we can choose anything. I mean, a lot of the times too that we find we're brought in too late in the process is when finishes and have been chosen. So that's all your fixed items, it's your floors, your walls, your ceilings. And those things really dictate what goes on within those spaces. So right. they're just as important as what is going to be on that floor, you know, in terms of furniture. So all of those things we do choose with you as client and we go through that process interior exterior where are the exterior is limited is we don't do landscape design or any of that stuff we call in the experts for that <laughs> but we can still look over all of the drawings work with them make sure that the pathway that goes through the garden is what you want it to be right. so again it's more of a collaboration on on those types of things but we definitely can sit in on them have an eye on them and input on them okay. yeah so from a student perspective or a younger person's perspective, mm -hmm. any recommendations on how to get into the field, what I should study, what I should do? Should I just come to work with somebody? Um, experience is always good. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of what you study, I think it depends. There's uh, interior design now is interior design, interior decorating, interior architecture. So there's all different paths that you can take. Whereas back when I did it, the, they weren't so distinctive. It was kind of like a mush of everything. Um, I think definitely do your research on what path you do want to take because again as I said it's not like you're having one singular path they all kind of overlap and you're working with people in all of the fields so it's good to kind of know how to read a drawing that an architect's going to do mm -hmm. or you know how to choose a color so it's kind of a mix up of all and I would definitely start with reading and just research um, coffee table books, all that type of stuff, like get really inspired and then kind of choose your path based on, on what you're inspired by. Because a lot of it, as I said, is managing people's expectations, which comes, which is a huge part of the job. And it also can be not really a burden, but it, it is managing people's expectations is hard. So if you don't love that particular line of work that you're in, <laughs> you're not gonna love managing the people's yeah, expectations yeah. that come along with it. So now that it's so segregated, I think you have to really choose which one you want to go with. Okay. And when you talk about interior decor, it's all of the pillows and the throws and that type of thing. Interior design is kind of in the middle. You do all the decor stuff, but you do all of the actual interior architecture stuff as well. So you learn all the programs, you learn how to read a document, read a drawing, which I think is really important. And then interior architecture kind of bridges that gap between architect and design. So it's way more, you know, the arches in this home and the pillars in this home, how are those things shaped right. and the actual physical architecture. So interior design as it sits in the middle is a really good way to kind of start. And you can kind of dabble in both on the side if you'd like. But again, it depends if you're more architecturally inclined interior architecture is really good. We have a teammate that actually studied interior architecture mm -hmm. and I did interior design. And then we had another teammate that did interior decor. decor. So putting us all together, we kind of bridged all the gaps and it was yeah. really nice working together. Uh, you could clearly kind of see the differences, but it's good to be well-rounded. If you can do all three, do all three. But it takes a little bit of time. Yeah. <laughs> That'll take forever. <laughs> okay, what would you say is your favorite project to date? Ooh, my favorite project to date. Don't get yourself in any trouble. Mm. <laughs> I don't know how to answer that question. I think from a commercial side of things, Salt Bar was one of our favorites and it's one of the tiniest. It's mm -hmm. just on the side of Seashed, but we were able to express kind of what we wanted to do with the space with no limitations and no restrictions. And I think the nice thing about it is that other people get to enjoy it. We do residential projects and they're beautiful, but sometimes we can't take photos of it. We can't take videos of it because the client doesn't want you to. So therefore no one else can really enjoy it. Whereas if you do a, a commercial space that people get to enjoy, you know, it is, it's way more fulfilling. So yeah, I think the salt bar, even though it's small, it's mighty. Okay. We really loved that project. And that was a COVID project. Good. We did wow. that kind good. of during COVID and then it opened up right as everything kind of opened up. And I think it's been a success. It's good. Yeah. Tell our audience how they can reach you. Pardon me? Tell our audience how they can reach you. Ooh, how you can reach me. Slide into my DMs. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, we do have an Instagram page. We do have a website which is being revamped in the beginning of 2024. But yeah, you can reach us through Instagram. On Instagram, you have our email address, our contact information, all of our contact numbers. Everything's there. You can slide in any way you want. 
<laughs> Thank you for joining us in this episode of Tara Talks. My name is Brian Puckerin. Thanks. This episode was filmed on location at the Sanzaru Villa in Sandalin. Sanzaru is a gorgeous 11 bedroom villa and perfect for the luxurious holiday getaway you've been planning. Click the link below for more information from our sister company, Blue Sky Luxury.